All right. Well, I got one more coming in here. All right. Let's get started. And like I said, I'm recording it. Uh, so everybody knows that. And I would like to welcome you to season two, episode three, better known as Delta Club's March member meeting. Uh, Lord, we wouldn't have thought that we would still be doing Zoom meetings, but uh, I think we're actually getting to the point where we're getting pretty good at it, so that's good. Um, before we actually officially started the meeting, and while I'm thinking about it saying that, one thing that was brought up is, you know, when do we think we're going to be able to start meeting in person? And, um, you know, everybody's wanting to do it. We just got to be careful and not do it too quick. Um, one thing's going to be what the church policy is. You know, we definitely need to follow their guidelines, uh, respect that. Um, you know, I know that, um, I know probably quite a few of y'all are, are able and, and bit, have gotten your, your shot, but, you know, um, there's some that haven't. I'm, I'm not, uh, I haven't, I'm not eligible yet. I'm getting close, but uh, too young and too healthy, I guess, but in their opinion. Um, you're eligible this week. This week it started? Yep. Phase one C, 16 and older with um, uh, there. There's a whole list of things. Is but it, I didn't think. You most likely fit the bill now. Oh, okay. All right. Just what are you trying to say, it. Ian? <laughs> no, nothing. I knew it was six. Nothing. I knew the key thing on that one was 16, but with the major medical thing. So I'm over, definitely over 16, but I don't. <laughs> I'm not going to admit to any major medical. Uh, or, or somebody but, in your household that has something, you know, some yeah. kind of comorbidity. My yeah, my wife's still got a lot of problems, but I don't know if that qualifies me for a shot or not. Um, <laughs> but that, and I'm just trying to, uh, you know, when, when it did come up, I started saying, you know, there are a lot of people who are in situations you know I'm, I'm not saying that i'm not going to do it but there's a lot of people that need it more than i do and it, it is from my understanding it is still pretty hard to, to, to get an appointment for it so i'm not wanting to take the appointment for that um but we are going to try to meet when we feel that it's that it's safe and we'll try in some way to do you know live and um on the air we'll just we'll work through that but uh <laughs> At this point, I don't see it changing enough where where we could probably meet live next month, but we'll see. We'll see. It's going to have to be a pretty big change to do that. All right. Uh, with that said, I just want to get that out of the way while, while people were probably thinking about it and while it was came up. It was one of the last things we were talking about before we actually started the meeting. Uh, let's see. I don't see I don't see Ham on here. Ham on? Gonna let him do the uh, the minutes in the treasurer's report, but somebody else might have a chance tonight. All right. Do we have a motion on the uh, treasurer's report and the minutes from the last meeting? I move. All right, Ned. And I think we got a uh, Dan Second. second it. All right. All in favor. Uh, anybody opposed is the main thing. We still got plenty of money. Uh, we're doing good. We're doing good. Um, all right. I guess we could do announcements. Um, I'm trying to, Joe, you, you're always good for updating on what you've got going on. I know that you got one or two things. Um, have uh, tech class 2-21 has had two classes. Uh, we'll meet Thursday night for the third class and then on the 22nd for the fourth and uh, 29th for the for testing on the fifth uh, on the fifth night and then 
April the 5th is uh, equipment demo. I think uh, we're running a little bit behind, so I want to make sure that uh, we might have to extend it one week. But uh, I'd rather do that than uh, cut the class short. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. If you're if you're able and willing to do that, but, that I'm uh, we uh, we did that. Uh, we did have testing uh, last month uh, for an extra class. Two two of our students uh, uh, got theirs. Uh, KY four. FH and K, KY4FB and KY4FH um, are the call signs. Um, we also did a uh, review and exam, a Laurel exam at Christian Brothers on the 24th uh, that uh, gained seven, uh, seven new technicians out of nine. So, uh, and the other, the two that didn't pass, uh, one failed miserably. He didn't study at all. And the other one uh, missed by a few. I don't think he had studied that much, but I think he missed 10 the first time and 12 the second time that we gave the, the test. But uh, uh, that's uh, a group of uh, students that Eric uh, Welch has at CBU in the uh, introduction to uh, UAV, uh, unmanned aerial system, UAS, unmanned aerial systems, to where they get technician, they get 10 points to the final grade for passing the tech exam. And that keeps them from having to, keeps them legal when they're using the drones uh, with uh, uh, photography in, in the ham radio frequencies. So that's good. Um, and that's all that we have for uh, training as of right now. Okay. Um, did you want to, are you ready to, 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 to discuss Huntsville or not quite yet? From well, your standpoint? Uh, we can. Uh, I didn't know if you wanted to bring that up uh, later. Uh, let's let's maybe discuss uh, uh, again uh, this past uh, Tuesday night uh, going to the Hunt Huntsville on a bus. Uh, I got some figures and uh, the cost of the bus and then I did an analysis of uh, the past uh, nine or ten years that we have taken the bus to Huntsville or that I had figures on. Uh, real handy and uh, it looks like it'll be 70 or 75 dollars depending on how many people we get to go on the bus. Uh, we need at least, uh, we need 35 people really to, to make it worthwhile and uh, keep from charging a club having to pay a lot of money uh, for it. Uh, the bus has gone up uh, several hundred dollars from last year, even though we didn't take it last year, but over yeah. 2019, yeah. it's uh, like $300 more and part of it, I'm sure, is probably because of, of the cleaning supplies that they have to do on it. Uh, I sent the board the COVID-19 guidelines, and uh, uh, they have some pretty pretty good guidelines in place. Uh, um, one thing is, is that uh, the bathroom is closed off unless somebody that's one of that. Uh, is one of the people on the on the bus other than the driver cleans the uh, uh, facility uh, uh, or whatever? Uh, that's a question that uh, we will we'll have to address. Yeah. Uh, but I talked with uh, the gentleman. I talked that I coordinate the bus uh, going to Huntsville, and he's he's uh, ready and willing to. To help out uh, the uh, von Braun Center, uh, the normal facility is is only about sixty percent of that big room that the von Braun Center has, and the von Braun Center is opening it up the full one hundred percent at no additional charge to um, the Ham Fest, so they could do social distancing. Um, the only problem is is that area was what uh, 
they used to bring trucks in and cars in to unload on Friday. And if they have tables and chairs set up there, it'll, it'll make it harder for the ingress and, and uh, egress of equipment uh, at, uh, at the beginning and the end of the ham fest, but uh, that doesn't affect us at all. No. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the entry fee is $10 again uh, as uh, last year and I believe in 2019. Uh, it was ten dollars as well. So, uh, and then uh, with food on the bus and drinks, uh, even at seventy-five dollars, you're, you're it's between fifty-five and sixty that you'd be paying for the ride ride on the bus. Okay. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. That's why I was going to ask for clarification, which I, I I knew. I think I thought I knew the answer, but yeah the the, the the 70 75 includes admission and the food so i mean that's 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 in line with what we've done you know the last two last time or two that we've done it and like you said with the extra expenses they've got the, the bus company's got because of covid um and you know i'm, I'm sure anybody filled up their car with gas lately fuel prices are going up um so i mean that's that's reasonable it's reasonable uh, what I'd like to try try to do is see if we can get a count of how many people would be willing to uh, go on the bus um, uh, or wanting to, to go on the bus so we can get a count and figure out to, to, bud, to budget it uh, accordingly. Um, okay. You want to take a, a head count? That, and that's, I'd be honest with you, that, that's one of the reasons why I brought it up so that we can kind of see if it is. And, See if it is worth pursuing. Um, and I do understand that uh, somebody was asking what's the date. That's uh, August 21st. Yeah. 20, yeah. August 21st. Um, you know, we go on Saturday morning, leave here early, get there about the time it opens, and leave about the time, you know, after they do a drawing at the basically at the end of the, the, the thing, and, and we stay for that and we're gone. So. It's uh, it works out real well. It works out real well. I know that some people, you know, um, still drive up. Uh, you can get there. there it, it's a, if you haven't been there before, it's adjacent to a uh, embassy suites. As of a week or so ago, you could get reservations if you wanted to drive up, but didn't want to drive up and back in one day. Um, if you're wanting to check on to that. I think if you mentioned that you're doing it for the uh, ham fest, it, it shows more rooms available than, than, than if you don't mention that. I think they, ham fest has got some blocked out and it shows like it's full, but last week there were some available when, when it was showing it's full. I believe Rick uh, Tillman has uh, information possibly that, uh, Rick, didn't you say if you went through the Huntsville ham fest website that uh, that's how you got reservations? Yeah, if you go straight to the hotel next door, usually it says it's sold out. If you go through the Huntsville Hamfest site, click on their link. I booked two rooms like that, and Errol got his right back to back, which he got bounced, you know, going through the hotel site. So he was able to do that. So uh, they got a block of rooms that don't show up if you try to go directly to the hotel. It's 137 plus tax for the, the place next door, which is pretty nice. Yeah. And I'm not trying to take away from the bus. I'm just trying to let people know while that option is, if it's still available, that that is an option, if that's something you're considering and you'd rather <clears throat> drive up on your own rather than, than being a bus with 30 other people. So, all right. Uh, let's see if we can do it this way. It, it, can we get a maybe a show of hands of who's, it's not a commitment, but it's just a general idea of, of if, if we took a bus, who would be interested in going? Hold up your hand and I'll try to, yeah. to uh, hold on. I know. Uh, hold up your hand. Yes, one, two, uh, three, four, five. Barry's raising, Barry said she's raising. <laughs> oh, Scott said he's raising his, all right. Hold on. Uh, let's see, who do we have? Let's uh, see. 
Uh, raise your hand. Dave, hey, Joe, David, KY4, in the chat there. F -A -F -H. F -H, yeah, he said his. Uh, so, I mean, you got a decent number. What are you at? I got Joe? one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like I said, I right thought now. I counted about nine or ten. So, I mean, that's that's a pretty good indication that we're it, it's 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 not out of the question. Uh, okay, somebody else is saying that. That other plan. Okay. All right. So we're you know we're we're we're. At, in the in the range of ten, so I'd say that it's worth, you know, uh, I tell you what, maybe what we'll do, we'll we'll, we'll do, you know, it, usually we'd have a sign up sheet. I'll try to before the next board meeting, I'll try to think of how we could do something like that, have something on the line or or something that that people could like sign up. Joe, I don't know that you want a bunch of emails, but. I'll get I'll get with you in between an email to, to somebody or, or a spread. Yeah, I'll, can I'll take emails. Okay. But put Huntsville Ham Fest and and uh well why don't we do maybe call sign maybe, and, and yeah. phone number. Maybe a combination if uh if you if everybody I think everybody knows Joe's email address, um WA four OVO at, at Gmail, right? Correct. Yeah. If you, if, if you want to go, you think, you know, when you're thinking about it, shoot him an email. Um, Joe, you're pretty good about keeping lists and spreadsheets or something. Maybe we can set that up where it's shareable and, and uh, kind of keep it, keep, keep it a running total or something. What's going to be the drop dead date to know? Um, We'll have to we'll have to see what the cutoff is with the bus company. Um, I would still August, June. I, I'd say I'd say we'd probably be safe. <laughs> These days, everybody's good about. Right now, most most uh, companies <clears throat> like that are are you know a little bit more lenient than they used to be about cancellations. But that's going to start tightening up, so we don't need to get caught on that either. But um, I think we I think we could easily get in the twenty range pretty quick once we get the, the word out. Um, if we get that close, we could we could see what we could do. All right, thank you, Joe. Appreciate your 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 work on the on checking on that. I knew that you already had the contacts, and, and that would be a good way to get that started. Seventy five bucks to ride the bus. Uh. John, I saw you on here, and you've usually got. You can, you, 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 I gave you some free advertising time for your <laughs> stuff uh, again. All right. Um, yeah, uh, Shelby County Aries uh, this month. Uh, as you can tell by the background behind me, spring's here, so severe weather's right around the corner. Uh, and the National Weather Service is doing Skywarn training. Uh, Steve, if you can uh, let me share my screen, I can. Uh, it should, should be where you can share it. I already had that set up when we were going to awesome. do the presentation. So let's see here. There we go. Can everybody see that? It's coming. There we go. So uh, if you go to weather.gov slash Meg uh, on, the, on the very top of the page, it'll say uh, Skywarn Spring 2021 training schedule. And uh, this is what they have uh, for their uh, schedule. Let me uh, scroll down here. And they've already started. Um, for Shelby County Aries, uh, we are planning on uh, doing the uh, the virtual training on uh, Monday, March the 22nd, except for Joe and myself, as uh, I believe he's got tech class that night. But um, these are the dates uh, for the basic Skywarn training. Uh, so the, the dates that are left are um, uh, coming up Thursday, the 11th, Monday, March 15th, Tuesday, March 16th, Monday, March 22nd, and Thursday, March 25th. 
They are doing an advanced spotter class this year, and uh, that's going to be uh, on Monday, March 29th. And then they have added two new classes this year. The first one is a spotter network operations class. That's going to be Tuesday, March the 30th. And then they are also offering a basic radar interpretation class, and that's going to be Thursday, April 1st, and that's not a joke. So uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much all I got. just wanted to run through all of the, uh, the training opportunities uh, that the National Weather Service has for Skywarn training. So I'll uh, go ahead and unshare this. And uh, again, that's uh, <laughs> National Weather Service Gov slash Meg, and then click on Skywarn training for more information. Okay. All right. Anybody have any questions or anybody have any questions or need any fills from John? Okay. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Anybody else have anything? And if you didn't get that uh, website, uh, Looks like uh, Ian put it in the in the chat there. So you can see that. All right. Anybody else have any announcements? I'm not seeing anything else. Yes, I uh, have a comment that might might be of interest. Uh, oh, with severe uh, spring and summer weather coming up, uh, for those that have a go box for emergency communications, I would suggest uh, at least once a month that you open your box, check your radio, check your battery, use your equipment for a little bit and uh, recharge your battery, keep everything up and in good working order, just to make sure. If you're going through the trouble uh, to put up a go box, at least make sure it's in good working shape, at least once a month. Uh, that's my thoughts. No, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. We, we, we've all at one time or another reached in the, uh, what I guess still call the glove box to grab the flashlight that's always in there and, and realize the battery's dead. So uh, that's something to learn from. That's a good point. Uh, along the same line, something that I found out the other day that I didn't know about, and I was going to share it while, um, you know, it came up and worked on my mind. Uh, I know not too long ago we had a thing about um, – logbooks of the world and, and all that. Something that I didn't know about is when you sign up for that, you've got to renew, it, you know, it doesn't cost anything, but you've got to renew that every three years. I tried to upload some stuff this weekend and it said, nope, you're not, you know, you're not active. And I said, well, yeah, I am, I have been. And then I, you know, searched it and you've got to renew that every three years if you, do it before it expires. It's a lot easier. It's a little bit more involved if you've let it expire and um, you gotta, gotta start all over again, so. Steve, yeah. I think it's your TQSL that certificate that runs out. Yeah, yeah, your certificate runs out, yeah. So uh, if somebody's using logbooks of the world and, and, and you've had it for, for more than a year or so, um, just Google that. I mean, it's I, 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 don't, I don't have anything together to put together as a presentation. It, it's pretty easy to find it. You can just look on there, uh, you know, expired LPL certificate or something. And it's, it explains it pretty, pretty easily, but it doesn't. As far as I know, I didn't get any kind of warning that it was about to expire. If I did, I, I uh, overlooked it. And, um, you know, I was trying to um, upload some stuff and it's going to take me a little bit longer to do it now. Uh, if you're, if you're like me, the law books of the world, it's, I, I like using it, but it is, it's, it's picky. And anything you can do to keep it running smooth is, is, is to your advantage. Jump in there real quick. You're talking about upcoming. We might do a junk in the trunk on 
May Day, since the weather be nicer by then, and no free fest this year. Uh, May first. Yeah. Okay. Hey, we'll, we'll compete uh, I, with the Russians. <laughs> hey, I just saw in QST uh, the new edition. They show the Bartlett Ham Fest as a go. Someone might want to call QST. Okay. Well, the guy from the Western ARRL. Uh, Contacted me last week and some others, and I told him it was gone, canceled. Yeah. It's in QST. It says it says it's an upcoming event. <laughs> Is it in the book you're seeing in QST that printed out? Yep. Oh well, I mean they did that months before. Yeah, they probably did. And that's another thing I was going to bring up. If anybody hadn't heard, um, you know, Free Fest this year is totally canceled. We're not going to do. Any, they're they're not going to do anything. Uh, online or, or in person at all, so, which is understandable. You know, that's early enough in the year that it's hard to plan anything for that. So. We uh, got into the point of uh, expense to the hospital and they got, you know, layoffs and and they furnished food and such, you know, that helped offset the building costs. So it just, if it was gonna be a loser for them. Right, oh yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, Danny is asking on the chat here, does anybody have information on a ham fest in Corinth this month? Does anybody know anything about that? Uh, I saw, I don't remember where it was. Um, the, I think they call it the April Fool's ham fest. That's down there in Corinth. Um, uh, I did see an advertisement for that as though it is happening this year like it has prior last couple of years. Okay. Uh, that may have been on the Sarah website. Who's Danny? Uh, just Dan, da, What's Danny. What's the call sign have, for Danny? Doesn't have a call sign, just Danny's iPhone. Uh, Danny Britt, KK4CBI. I used to, used to be over in West Memphis. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, nobody knows anything for sure. Uh, I'll try to maybe look here in a minute online and, and see, but um, something like that's going to be like anything else. It's, it's, it's the best information is going to be to see what you, if uh, one thing that I found on a lot of things like that is their website may or may not be up to date. Look, if, if you're on Facebook, see if they've got a Facebook page. A lot of places seem to be kind of putting <coughs> more up-to-date updates on their Facebook page if they've got a uh, a website that's it's difficult maybe for them to update. They seem to be, uh, some organizations seem to be uh, using Facebook pages if you've got access to that. Yeah, it was not updated as of last night. And one of my buddies said he had heard they were going to have it. So I okay. told him I'd ask. Good. Okay. Yeah. The, the Sarah website, SERA.org, they have a flyer up for April Fool's Ham Fest at uh, Crossroads Arena in Corinth, Mississippi, March 27th and 28th of 2021. So says the flyer. So looks like they're doing it. Appreciate it. Okay. That's not too far. That's, that, that's doable. Uh, the only other one that I know of, I think it's this, this weekend or next weekend. Uh, Tullahoma, I mean, that's a bit of a haul, but if it's nice, nice weather, and somebody's looking for one to do, um, I, I have seen that they were going to do one. And toward the end of the month, there's one over in Se Sevierville, Tennessee, that that's a haul. But they're, uh, they're bragging that they're going to do what? Um, yes. Yeah, so there, there's a few that are trying to do some things. Keep your ears open, and, and um, if you hear something, share it with the rest of us. And uh, and uh, if you can, anything that's going on, if you can get to it and support it, I'm sure that that would be appreciated. All right. Anybody have anything else? All right. If not, Ian, you ready? I can remember to unmute myself first. That'd be helpful, <laughs> wouldn't it? Let me 
let's get this up. And while he's getting ready, I, I do have something that I'm going to share, but I was wanting to, to do that after his. Um, so uh, you can hang around for, for a minute after his. I've, I've got something to share. All right. So wanted to go over because we had a few requests for Memphis area repeaters, um, a couple of the features on them that are, are not universal uh, for all the repeaters set up in the area and some of the basic activity. Um, this is definitely not an exhaustive list. Uh, we have a pretty high concentration of repeaters and activity. Um, a lot of it is uh, happens around the same time, like the, the drive in and drive out for work, but it's not necessarily scheduled um, and things tend to change. I had this vetted through a few people, so <clears throat> hopefully everything is accurate, but if there's something that conflicts, uh, I do apologize. So starting here with Delta, um, you can find a full list of the Delta Club repeaters on the website, deltaclub.org slash repeaters. Um, I put a list in here. I don't want to just sit here and, and read you a list of frequencies. So I'll, we'll mostly just stick with highlights. This list is on the website. Um, and the websites for pretty much all the organizations in the area, as well as there's a, a full page that uh, is maintained that's available for download from our website that includes a list of uh, almost every frequency in the area. But of course, our main, the 14682, don't know that I need to tell anybody that. Um, I didn't know quite how long it had been in service until I started writing this up, that it's been in service since before 1976. And it's been at its current location up in Brunswick since July of 1999. Um, it is analog only and uh, at the current time does not have any linking on it. Um, it is up in Brunswick and it's on a tower uh, the tower itself, I believe, is around 1,200 feet, and the A2 is on the 500-foot mark, approximately. Um, of course, the backup, I say the backup repeater, it's the backup for the 8 p.m. net. It's 146625. Sure. It's over in uh, Germantown on top of the water tower. It's been in service since 2018. Um, it is analog, but it does have linking capabilities with All-Star. I'll get into some more detail on how that can be used uh, later. But the, the All-Star node, what they call the node, num the ID number is 48342. Um, and the Echo Link ID is 363378. Both of those are ways that you can link from other repeaters, excuse me, um, over the internet. Um, there's a analog infusion capable machine. It's 14736. It's on top of Methodist North Hospital. Um, there's a 220 repeater, 224.42. Um, the I had a uh, a 220 radio for a little bit, and I don't know what happened, but the re the receive on it just is not operable for me anymore so I haven't been on any 220 in a while but I know there was a decent amount of activity um, last I was there um, that one's also on top of Methodist North Hospital uh, the 443.2 uh, on the University of Memphis campus uh, 443.7 it was just put in service for the Delta Club just a couple of years ago um, it's also on the same tower as the 146.82. Um, I'm in Cordova. I can hit it from my desk with an HT and the stock antenna. Um, similar to the A2 repeater, but um, for me, I don't know if it's just my specific environment, but the 443.7 seems to come in a little clearer and I can hit it a little easier. Um, it is fusion capable. Um, I 
I don't remember hearing any fusion on it before, but that doesn't mean that uh, that's not operable there. Yes, it, it is. It is operable. Okay. Um, do you have it where it'll just automatically flip? Yes. So, okay. All right. So that one will do either one right now, just depending on whatever's transmitting into it. Okay. And then there's an APRS Digi Peter on top of Methodist North Hospital. Of course, it's on the on 144.390. Uh, activity, just everybody hopefully knows, unless you're very, very new <laughs> and didn't go through any of the classes here. <laughs> There's the 8 p.m. nightly net um, on the 146.82. It's got a secondary frequency of the 146.625. Uh, weekly, there's a wild net for the ladies of amateur radio. Saturday is at 845. Um, or if the 8 p.m. net extends past 845, it usually begins a couple of minutes afterwards. Um, there's a MedMERS, uh, which is a, a test for the medical facilities and response in the area. Happens Wednesdays at noon on the 146.82. Um, and then, of course, meeting activity. We have a meeting second Tuesday of each month. Uh, the link is always in Sparks. And our next group, we have MARA, as most people call them, Mid-South Amateur Radio Association. Um, they have a number of repeaters also. We've got a 147.030. Uh, the 145.210, uh, the 444.175, those are both really easy to hit anywhere in and near the Midtown area um, and further, but they come in really nice and clear down there. <clears throat> um, and there is a, a 900 megahertz repeater, the 927.6125. If you have any 900 capable equipment. Um, there is a, oh, I'll skip to the next slide. There is a net, um, they call it the Super Niner net. They would be pleased to have anybody new join that wants to. Um, they do that around 8.30 on Sundays. Again, it's after the, the Delta net, if the Delta net extends past 8.30. Um, they also have a weekly Elmer net on the 145.210. Um, which used to be linked to the 444.175, but I don't believe that is the case. I did not update that in this spot. It's on the 444.175, actually, and not the 210. The 210 is not okay. operable right now. Okay. All right. So ignore the 145.210. <laughs> Their Elmer net is on the 444.175. Um, their meetings are the first Thursday of each month at seven, uh, also through Zoom. Um, and their meeting link is on the website that they update each month. Um, but if you, you want to make it into the ElmerNet, 444.175 is um, in Midtown, but it's one of the ones that's, that's fairly good to be able to reach but it's a positive five megahertz offset appeal of 107.2, like most of our, most everything in the area uses. Right. <laughs> and there's one of our, one of our systems in the area. Um, so Tri-State, uh, as most people call them, they also have, and, and I'll ask um, that these, links get put on the website as well so that they're a little easier to get to if you aren't familiar with the different organizations in the area and get into their websites. Um, but Tri-State, we actually do have a six meter FM repeater uh, that's on top of Clark Tower. So that is have... correction, it's on oh. Hilton Hotel now. Okay. So moral of the story for this presentation, if you don't update your website, I'm going to tell people the wrong stuff. <laughs> so, so that's on top of 
the Hilton Hotel, which is at Poplar and 240. Um, they have the 14545. Uh, this is also an all star and Echo Link capable repeater. Um, it's also linked on, there's a Skyward net that happens on the first of each month that links into this repeater. Uh, I have more details on that later in the presentation also. Um, the 14685, uh, which is also on the Hilton Hotel at Poplar and 240. Um, and it is linked to the 444.775. Uh, putting this together, I had to read all these three or four times for fear of reversing some of our uh, some of our repeaters in the area. So one four six dot eight eight, which is fusion repeater. It's over in Midtown. Uh, they have one in Oakland. One four six dot nine four on top of Water Tower out there, uh, which is also Echolink capable. Another 220 in the area, which is uh, East Memphis at Poplar and 240 on the Hilton. The 444-775. And then there is a D-Star repeater. Um, these two frequencies are run off of the same repeater, but they're not like this, like the 444-775 lists that it's linked to the 146.85. Um, while these are run from the same site and the same equipment, uh, the two meter and the um, 70 centimeter are not automatically linked. You can link them. I'm not gonna go that in depth here, um, but just because something's transmitted into one side, uh, it will be transmitted out of the same side, but not necessarily the other. D star is a, there's enough detail into that, that that needs its own presentation to go into more detail. Um, but it's also at the Hilton at Poplar and 240. Uh, some of the activity for tri-state repeaters in the area, um, the Shelby County Aries net is on Thursdays at nine on the 14685. And then um, the Skywarn net links into the 145.45 and the 146.625 and also into a DMR talk group, which I list all that out again um, here in a minute. So the Digital Amateur Radio Club, um, they have a D-Star repeater and a DMR repeater, D-Star, it's a similar explanation to Tri-States. They have a two meter side and a 440 side. Um, they're not automatically linked together, um, but, but they can be used at the same time. Um, and those are just north of Shelby Farms Park in Cordova. Um, the DMR repeater in town is the 443.0125. It's also just north of Shelby Farms Park. Um, we did another uh, presentation a few months ago with some more detail on that. Um, but if, if you find their page up here, which I'll also ask if we can put on the website, like the rest of these, excuse me. Um, this is just the basic information to get into one of the talk groups there. Um, D star nets, uh, there are various ones that happen through the week. I focus more on the, the very regular and the local ones. Um, there is a, a Memphis, more of a Memphis centric net that is on Fridays at 8 30. Um, and then there is a cert net that happens on Thursdays at 8 30. All right, some more of the surrounding areas um, and just some some not club specific activities. The Skywarn monthly net, um, I've mentioned it a few times already. First day of the month, 
and it's on DMR. Um, it, it's most where most of the users that I've encountered get into it. Um, on the W4 LET repeater, it's that 443.0125. Uh, it's on time slot one and talk group 31471. Um, Tipton County, this is their website. They have a repeater with a weekly net at 7.30. Their monthly meeting, uh, from what I could find, was the third Monday at 7 p.m. in Atoka. Um, DeSoto County, their Aries net, Mondays at 8.30. And uh, OBARC, I think, is what they're normally <coughs> called, the Olive Branch Amateur Radio Net, Amateur Radio Club Net. They have a Thursday 8.30 net as well. And we, we have a list of the nets in the area that I'll see if we can put on the website to download along with the frequency list that's already up there. And then there's a Mid-South area. <laughs> repeater linking net. It's monthly on the fourth Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m. Um, for all of these different areas, just inclusive of um, the tri-state area here, Full in Arkansas, um, Olive Branch, and Tipton County, and uh, two different points in Arkansas. Some simplex activity. We have um, the only simplex net that I'm aware of is the bullfrog net. It's every night at 7:30. Yeah. On the the frequency is 146.535. If you've ever just been scanning two meter, you've probably heard them jump in there a few times. Um, I listed the for in case we. Do you have anybody that's still new and trying to remember all these? The national two meter calling frequency is 146.52. Um, there are a lot of people that keep that in their scanning. Um, I've used it and made a few brief contacts just driving. Uh, if I'm on a longer road trip, it's nice for that. Um, and then for 70 centimeters, 446 megahertz. The regional frequency coordinating body, if anybody is not aware, is I, I mentioned the website earlier because they have some flyers for local ham fests. It's uh, Sarah, the Southeastern Repeater Association. Their website is sarah.org. They have a complete list of the published band plans for Tennessee. Um, if anybody remembers in the their class talking about for the new people, good amateur practice. One of those is making sure that you do what you can to stay within your regionally coordinated band plan, whether that be repeater or uh, simplex. All right, so finding local repeaters, whether they're here because I could sit here and not take a breath and talk like uh, an auctioneer for two hours and not list all the frequencies <laughs> in the area. Um, so to find them here, or if you, you happen to be traveling around, if you know you're going to take a trip somewhere, uh, the two main resources that I use is RFinder. Um, if you go to rfinder.net or just search for them, uh, you can search based on an area. Um, search is free. They do have some paid features. Uh, if you, they have basically one plan, their shortest plan is a minimum of a year, but it's, it's $13. Um, but you can export it for GPS devices. If you want to put it in a, a car GPS, uh, you can export it so that you can open that frequency list in your programming software. Um, Chirp is one of the main ones that they tout since it's so common. Um, you can even search on a route. That is a paid feature, but if you know you're going to be taking a trip from here to, I don't know, Florida, um, then you can put in your start and your destination, um, and it will pull up a route as well as some various options, which I'll, I'll show both of these websites in a few minutes. 
um, but it will pull up the routes for you to be able to pull a repeater list that you can program into your radio. Um, and of course, you can search it from their web page. You can search it from inside their various software. Searching from inside the software is a, also a paid feature, uh, but they have mobile apps available too for Android or iPhone. A repeater book is very similar. It's a, a little more simplistic. Um, I tend to like their Android and iPhone app better than I like Parfinders. That's not any, saying anything bad about it. It's just a personal preference. Um, but if you turn location on on your, your phone and pull up either of these, um, it makes it very easy for you to be able to find and search repeaters that are in your area. And I'm going to skip to um, walking through these websites real quick before we move on. So this is our finder, um, the basic searching. You can um, log in here. So if I just want to look up Cordova, Tennessee, you tell it a location look up unless you happen to magically have your latitude and longitude memorized. And if you do, then good for you. <laughs> uh, you can lim limit uh, by band or mode. Um, it's like if you know you don't have a fusion radio um, or if you're, you're not looking for amateur television or an XDN uh, and you don't have a 900 radio, uh, and then you can give it a, a radius like most searches. You pull up your repeater list um, and it pulls up a very thorough list of everything in that range with a lot of information um, on each one, whatever, any information that's already been put into the system. And it's, it's pretty comprehensive for being able to find and connect to these. Uh, if it's all-star capable, it'll even list the all-star node number. Um, up here, you can tell it to show you a map, and it does exactly what it sounds like, shows you a map where you can, well, it makes you think you can click on an icon. Sometimes clicking on a repeater in this in the map view has not uh, pulled that up for me. But in the list view, the main thing I use uh, is this option right here to, um, you export, select that and export your list. And then it will let you save it. And then you can open that in your in Chirp or in your programming software. And it looks similar to how you would enter those manually, except it's done 90% of the work for you. Uh, if you want to search along a route, you just use their route search. I said it is a paid feature, so you have to have uh, your login to it. Um, but it's, it's $13 a year. You put in Cordova, Tennessee, and say you're driving to Atlanta. Um, you can put that in there. And this, instead of distance from the single point, it's the distance off the road. You can even put in waypoints to make sure that it uses the same route you're going to use. And pull up your list. This one can take a while since it has, especially the longer your route, because <laughs> it has to figure out the route and then it has to pull the repeater list for that whole whole time frame. Um, but it, it takes you in order of your route through all of the repeaters available along that route. And you can still go in and export it just as easily, it might take a little bit longer and because it is a large, large list. But you can still export it and use that to program your radio much easier than having to try and find each one along the way yourself. Repeater book. Um, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, you can use the call sign search if you know what you're looking for. Um, they list uh, North American repeaters. Uh, they have some that are not just inside of North America. 
uh, simplex nodes that have been registered in their system, uh, and then even GMRS repeaters. But the typically the easiest way for me that I've found is to just drill down into the area you're looking at. Um, like you can see, they have 460 repeaters in Tennessee. Uh, you can do it by band, feature, linked systems, um, emergency service repeaters, and what specific emergency service it's for. Um, recommended for use along different highways. Like if you know you're going to be along Interstate 240, you can you can go directly there, and it shows you what's next to it. It's not guaranteed to be completely accurate because we all know that you can reach more than just this repeater from Highway 240. <laughs> um, and from there, you, you can go into each town. Um, you can also search. Um, this is probably the easiest way to drill down to a city if you already know what city you're going to be next to uh, or county. So oftentimes that's a little easier. Just to show you an example here. Just pick our eight two. So it shows you the down link, the up link, uh, what the offset is, the tone you need, uh, what grid square it's in, um, if it's operational, the the general coverage, different features, the website, if somebody's, if they've been able to find the website information for it, um, any notes, nets. And then the part that I like the best is it will show you as well as it can a general area where the repeater is, which you can even zoom in on. So you can find that this is, that is where the WATN tower is. Um, that's where uh, Barry W5CJ has probably spent more time than he'd like to admit, <laughs> but that's good for us and we appreciate it. Um, but it will also show an, an, an estimation. Um, and I want to emphasize that it's an estimation of coverage um, as it says, the coverage circle does not account for propagation anomalies. Um, you know, just general electronic interference that may be in your house or if you have you know, aluminum wiring still in your walls, it's causing <laughs> issues getting back out to it. All right, any questions about um, our finder or repeater book? I haven't seen anything pop up, but I haven't been able to watch the chat too close right now. All right. So, keeps reversing this on me. How about that? All right. So, all star and echo link. So, aside from digital voice like D star and DMR, um, we also have linking capabilities for just analog signal repeaters. You can use these with any normal radio like you would any other repeater. This is just some additional features that they have. Um, and it involves linking over the internet so that you can link multiple repeaters that are in different sites. Um, you can link to a different state if they have a, a link that's available there. It's used with the National Weather Services, the Skywarn net that happens at the first of each month. Um, and part of that is, is interoperability and to make sure that everybody that, you know, somebody may have a, a DMR radio or, or a repeater that is uh, more available to them or easier for them to hit and connect to if they need to send in a Skywarn report versus an analog repeater. So All Star allows all of those to, to link together with a lot more detail than we can really get into here. That's definitely a presentation on its own that 
that I am not versed in that enough to, <laughs> to really give you, but we do have people in the area that are. But the, the very basic commands for all star linking, um, and these are using the, where did I put it? Just using the keypad on your radio, the DTMF tones that are on most any and every radio. Um, but star 70 will give you the local node status if anything is linked for all star. Um, if you want to disconnect a link, use star one and then the node number. So if the node number that you wanted to disconnect was 2000, um, it's, it's just like keying up and dialing star one, two, zero, 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 zero. Echo link is very similar. Uh, one of the main things that, that I like about echo link is you can use a mobile application to get into a repeater or to find another echo link node. <clears throat> um, to me, echo link is the easiest way if you want to be able to use a smartphone with an internet connection to communicate through a repeater. I know uh, Joe typically demos that in his classes. So I think everybody's seen that probably at least once. Um, but most of this is just based around, you can find these just searching. I'll see if we can also get these links posted on the website so that they're a little easier to find. Um, but it, it's really, it's from, from that side of it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, obviously, just like with any repeater or service, um, obviously use good amateur practice, make sure nobody else is in the middle of using it before you start linking or unlinking something. Um, Echolink also does have a, a PC software for Windows that you can load onto your computer and use Echolink through your computer. Any questions about All Star or Echolink? Uh, just a quick comment: when you're also when you're linking or unlinking, uh, just make sure you ID before you uh, uh, send those codes. Just so you know, because you are technically transmitting. Yes, you are transmitting, and it's most of the I guess courtesy that I've observed people use is um, they'll key up they'll announce their call sign and then usually they'll give some indication as to what they're linking to so that anybody else monitoring knows um, what's going to be going on. Uh, they'll try and note if it's for a, a specific net. So like for the Skywarn net, they'll usually announce that it's linking in there um, before and after just to make sure that everything's going through. Yes, IDing is important. Um, even for linking, even if you're, if you use the, say you, you use the Android application for Echo Link, you connect into um, a repeater and you're still transmitting uh, for amateur radio. So you're still, it's still highly recommended and uh, a good thing to still identify with your call sign to make sure that you still follow the practice that everybody's supposed to subscribe to. Thank you, John. That's a very good point. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. Uh, yes. Carlos or CEO. Um, I use Ecolink overseas all the time, and I have spoken with several of the clubs in different countries, and you're not required Wired to have a local license to use it. So you can always use it out of your room. It's considered voice over the internet. And that's how I communicate most of the times. Okay, awesome. I had never um, tried it or, or really heard anybody connect back here from overseas, but that's, that's good to know that that's a, that's a really cool way to be able to use that.
right. Um, that's really most all of what I had, unless anybody else had questions, comments, concerns, other corrections that I missed in uh, my list here. Um, like I said, we are going to see about making sure. I know that the list of frequencies is on uh, the Delta Club website, and I'm going to check and see that the list of nets is also on there as well. I don't think it's the most up to date, Ian. Uh, Mr. Joe did give me a listing, uh, I think last week or the week before, of the updated one, so it does need to be updated. Okay. I will All be. Right. I will be updating that. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Well, Ian, I knew you would do a good job on that, and you definitely did. That's that's something I've learned or, or been reminded of some things and uh you know th this one is one anything to do with the repeaters i mean that's that's what i've you know i, I think sometimes we uh uh kind of overlook um you know how useful that can be um uh, and the fact that um uh, you know everybody's got access to all of this you know tech on up to the extra um uh, and this, you know, is a reminder to some people, um, like Carlos just said, you know, you can, you can use this internationally or, or you know, if, if anybody ever has a chance to travel again, you can use it when you're traveling. So uh, that's nice. Anybody have any questions, comments, anything? You're pretty thorough, but anything you feel like we need to, uh, any, anybody using an option that you'd like to put a blurb in for? Yeah, um, if I may, Steve, uh, yeah. Carlos here. Um, have you guys heard of the uh, small device called Blue Cat? I have heard of it. Okay, um, I, I, I just purchased one. It works really good with repeater book. If you have, I think it's Yesus. A57, 17, 18s, 897s, and 100 Ds. And on I come 7,100 and It comes out of England. It's like 59 pounds. I can't remember what it comes out to dollars. But you connect it to your, on the back of the radio, to your cat uh, port. And it links through Bluetooth into your not on iPhone, it has to be a Android phone or, or tablet and basically list all the repeaters near your area. You don't have to put it in your radio's memory and all you got to do is select them on the screen oh. of the device and automatically transfer it to your radio. I just purchased one for my A57 and it works like a champ. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, if you, you go to YouTube, look for Blue Cat, and, and you, you'll see a couple of videos on it. And uh, can't remember the name of the company. It's called MLS. Um, email me or text me, and I'll, I'll be more than glad to forward information. Okay. Yeah, for, you know, for, for that price and the fact that you could use it on several different radios, I mean, that's a, I think, you know, uh, finding a list of, of repeaters and stuff using a GPS-enabled radio is, is an option on some of the higher end radios, but that's that's pretty reasonable price and, and retrofit for, for uh, radio that we already have, so great. Yeah, yeah, especially for the older ones. I mean, yeah. like yeah. the A57 doesn't have GPS or anything, and it, yeah. and it works really good, and its safety factor is really good because you're not messing with your radio. All you got to do is look at it, punch it on the screen of your device, and automatically transfer it, Wow. and you're you're on the air. Can you uh, put the link in the chat? Yeah, sure. I'll I'll put it in. Give me a second. I'll I'll get it done. Okay. All right. Anybody else? All right. All right. Now I have got. If it, I know that we're getting a little long here, and but I've got something that I was wanting to. Uh, uh, you know what I mentioned in the president's quarter. And I uh, wanted to, now, what do I do, Sherry? 
Huh. Ooh, what do I do to share? Ah, share my screen. Okay. Um, some of y'all may have seen or heard. We now have a YouTube channel. Um, it's not going to help you. I know that my grandson uses YouTube all the time to see how to get to the next level on Fortnite. It won't help you with that. But uh, as a lot of you know, may know, we've got we've had a Facebook page for a few years now. Um, now that we've started uh, having the meetings, I've tried to put the the, the meetings on the on the, on the uh, Facebook page. But number one, we've got. Uh, you know, some people that aren't on Facebook. And number two, when you put something on Facebook, it's kind of hard to go back and find it. Um, I've had some people that are on Facebook that said, hey, you know, do you have the, you know, meeting from whenever? And uh, I said, yeah, it's there, but it's, you know, I, I admit it's hard to find. So um, this is a byproduct of the snow that we had a couple of weeks ago. I was sitting around and, and just thinking of some things to do and actually this did not take long to put together and um you know it's going to be pretty easy to update um you know you just you just you know everybody you don't have to be a member of anything to, to get on youtube that's something that i think everybody's got access to all you got to do is delta amateur radio club and you, you should be able to find it um you know you can see you know just the, the videos that we have, uh, I think that does it pretty much in the order that they were added. But one thing that I like and that, that I've done is what's called playlist. And what uh, what we're going to do is, you know, the member meetings, you can see them all grouped together. Um, you know, it's got, got the, the, you can see the date when the meeting was. Uh, one thing that I wrote a, a note to myself on is I didn't go back. Um, I think what would be helpful is uh, the topic uh, for the presentation for that month. I'll go back into the, uh, the notes or uh, the description for each, each one of these and put what the topic was. Um, I think that's something that would be helpful that I didn't think about until just now. Um, <clears throat> We've got some other videos. Uh, that's the thing. That's the only thing on YouTube. It's basically got to be a video. So it's not, it's not a great way of posting pictures. Like somebody said, we could do a, uh, uh, you know, we could put some of them together, some pictures together, uh, and, and, you know, uh, you know, do it that way and, and, and maybe do some, but it, it's a great way of doing uh, videos. Uh, something that some of y'all maybe haven't seen before. Um, you know, we, we, we were lucky enough to have um, you know, the first president of the club show up a couple of years ago and, and gave an impromptu speech of, of his history with the club and, and history of the club. And, and that, that's a nice video if you haven't seen that before. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, I've done some drone stuff and, and some, some things on, on the, uh, here's actually, that's not on there twice, okay. Um, we had on uh, 2019, one of the news channels came out and did a, a story on their news channel um, for field day. I grabbed that uh, and put it on our Facebook page and, and I put it here. Um, I've, I'll look back and see if I can find some other videos, but we were a little, you know, since there wasn't a whole lot in the last couple of years, um, I'll look and see what else I have and what I can put together. If anybody else has got any uh, videos that you think that uh, would be interesting for the club, uh, you know, send them to me or let me know about it and, and we'll, we'll uh, see what we can do about putting them up here. Uh, now, another thing that we've got on here is what's called channels. And what that is, is other uh, YouTube channels that we feel are uh, maybe helpful uh, got, so that we're not posting the same thing that they are. Um, 
you know, gives you access to a few that we think are, are you know, worth, worth looking at. Um, discussion, yeah, I don't think there's anything in there about. Uh, I've got a link to our, our website and a link to our Facebook page. But uh, it's just something, you know, right now it's basically is just our meetings. Uh, I know that there's some people that like even tonight, there's some people that um, signed on a little bit later. If, um, if you signed on, generally um, it takes, after I've, we finish the meeting, because the meeting for over an hour, it, 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 my computer's got a process transferred into a file and, and then do all that. So um, hopefully by, you know, usually by the next morning, I'll, uh, I'll be able to post it up on our, on our Facebook page or our YouTube page, YouTube page. Well, and I'll still do the Facebook page too for people that have that. So. Any questions, comments? I appreciate all your work. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if we get to about 2 million subscribers, um, you know, we can, we can maybe do away with the dues and we'll, we'll, we'll We'll monetize this thing if we can get to a couple of million viewers and, and uh, we'll, we'll do away with the dues. So get your friends and family involved and, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Anything else? That's it. That one, hopefully YouTube something that a lot of people are pretty familiar with. Um, if you're not, grab a, a, a kid or a grandkid from across the street and I'm sure they can help you. I picked up my grandson from school today and first thing he did was get home and get on the computer and watch YouTube and stuff. All right. Is there anything else that you know of that you want us to, somebody mentioned, boy, it'd be nice if we could have, uh, you know, David Campbell used to record a lot of our meetings. I don't know where those are. And as far as I know, the club doesn't have them. Um, I think that was something that he had, and I don't know that we've got him anywhere. If any, anybody knows about some of those that he did, um, let me know. All right. Stop sharing. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully that'll help. Uh, does anybody have anything else that they want to share? Questions? Comments, concerns. I know we've got a couple of people who are probably out of liquid refreshment that they started with and ready to go. So all right. I don't see we had a, huh? We had a ch uh, chat question about oh. um, manually programming a Balfang radio. So I'm gonna send a link to the um, the main site that I typically use to find those. Um, the, the model that was being asked about was the UVS9 plus, which is supposed to just be essentially a, an updated version similar to the UV5R. They're all close enough that um, pretty much the same guide should work, <clears throat> but there are a lot of resources on the link that uh, I just sent yeah, to help that, you yeah, get started on that. Up. That's what I was trying to that, that, that no floor. Yeah, that, that's a good link. Whoever's looking for the, uh, the so yeah, Denver AJ4 EHH. That's a great resource, that, that link right there. About a year ago, Ian, you did a presentation on uh, programming. Uh, that you showed a video from YouTube, that's been pretty helpful as well. Yeah, um, I think, are, are those, is that on the website's uh, links page? I'm not sure. No, some of them made it there. Yeah, because that was a really good, you know, stepped you through what each one of them that you needed to program. <clears throat> yeah, okay. <clears throat> All right. Hopefully that will help uh, help you that, that was asking for that. But if uh, you still need some help, uh, let us know. 
but that that the Balfons are, are nice, but man, they are a booger bear to, to program. But once you do it, it's not too bad once you figure out the, the sequence of um, how you need to do it. Anybody got anything else? Um, Steve. Yeah. Um, when we get a hundred subscribers on the YouTube channel, we can have our own custom domain name. We've already got a domain name. I mean, for YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Okay. We have to have 100, but we got to have 100 subscribers first. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see. I don't, I was just kind of kidding around, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see. This is something to start with, and it's, it's one of those deals. If we don't start now, then, then we're going to lose. You know, think of all the things that we've lost over the years that we could have had. Um, and that, that does tie in with the fact that once we do start going live, I would like for us to um, – um, it, it may take a little trial and error for a month or two, but I would like to find a way for us to um, do a good way of recording them and, and keep going forward on, on, on having a record uh, – uh, video record of, of, of our meetings, um, any other events that we do, I'll try to start, anybody else and myself, try to start doing some more videos and, and we'll have a record of that. Okay, anybody else? Oh well, yeah, um, Carlos here. Yeah. Do we have, I have an HRI 200 box for Fusion that I'm not using anymore. Um, I'm willing to donate it. If there is a repeater that we can turn into a fusion repeater in the area, I guess we still need a computer. Um, I guess Barry will be the person to talk to. Yeah, Barry, do you have a need? Do we have a need for that? Or well, um, I'm not 100 sure what all uh, it is, but. Um, uh, I'm assuming it's going to require an internet connection, correct? Correct. Yep. Yeah, basically, you take the analog side into the digital side for system fusion, and then you can cross back, cross talk if, if you have to. Well, the um, the uh, only fusion repeater we have that has internet access is the one running All Star and Echo Link. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Bellevue. Out there in Brunswick, we do not have access to internet. No. Hey, Barry, this is Bobby, KD5BS. Yeah. You, you don't need to have it located specifically at the repeater location. You can run it from your shack and operate WIRESX over air to the repeater. Yeah. Like I say, I'm, I'm not extremely versed on it. Um, you know, I hear about it here and there, and, and I know people that have done that, but, um, you know, maybe you guys can teach me all about it. Yeah. Yeah. I believe um, Jeff has set up on his house through. Yeah, uh, I'm, actually, I'm yeah. actually running three of them right now. Are you? So. Well, maybe I need to talk to you to set it up on my house, and then we can run it that way. Sure. All you gotta do is have permission to connect it to the repeater. Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, I uh, do appreciate y'all joining us. Uh, we've had a pretty pretty good turnout and uh, hopefully we will be able to get together soon in person. And, uh, but until then, let's stay in touch. And if you would, Clean up around your areas and don't forget to push your chairs under the table. We'll see you next month. Bye, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Steve. Thanks, Ian. Bye. Uh, thanks, everybody.